Let's answer. Nah, should I just go here? Yeah, that's great. That's great. Um, <clears throat> yeah, I'm going to go to the zoo, though, after oh, this. Awesome. What'd you think? What did I learn while making this film? Learned how to keep uh, an iPhone uh, warm with a, <laughs> with a foot warmer. Yeah, well, I, I embraced them dying. Yeah. <laughs> you know, I, I like it when phones die. Yeah. So, other than that, it's it's hard to process what you learn. It takes it takes a while to to come out of a movie out of that fog. Um, but I'll tell you this: it was you know flexing a whole lot of new muscles. I had no idea what I was doing, and I had to fake it till I made it. Mm, mm. <laughs> well, I I was I was pretty worn out after this after this film. I guess I I'd, I'd finished Westworld maybe six months before, and I went straight from Westworld to a film that we shot in, a, in an actual working maximum security prison. <laughs> uh, I went back to New York, I did uh, another film, um, and then went to Cincinnati, first of the year, to do Emilio Estevez's film, which just played here, and then shortly after that came up to wow. uh, Alberta, and pretty rugged terrain out there, mm -hmm. which we explored uh, pretty, you know, relatively extensively. So when I when I got when I got back, I was I was done. <laughs> yeah, that's interesting, because I'm sitting there prepping for months and months. Yeah. Uh, and singularly focused on this one film yeah. uh, for the better part of a year and a half. And uh, I had no idea you had just done like five other projects. Yeah, yeah. Talk about switching gears. Yeah. <laughs> and it, the, it was a great culmination, though, this piece. But the elements are so much a part of uh, the storytelling, you know, by design. Mm -hmm. And, you know, we threw ourselves uh, inside of them. And... You know, I loved it. I loved it, but I did feel, you know, I felt pretty beat, pretty beat up at mm -hmm. the end, which is a good feeling. It's a good feeling to have. And and again, the amount of effort that it took for us to pull this thing off was um, was really made easier to some extent, as easy as it could be, could could have been by the crew, by mm -hmm. you know our, our Canadian colleagues uh, out in out in Calgary who just busted their asses to uh, you know to facilitate uh, you know our work. So. Yeah, it was great. It was great. It's just so beautiful too. It is that part of the Amazing. world is so incredibly beautiful. And I, and again, I just con continue to like kind of talk about the the beauty of those mountains. It was just beautiful, beautiful it's, country it's to be true. in. True. And in that same vein, I, I remember one of the few things I did learn, because I am I, I dare not ask you for feedback on camera about <laughs> the process. I'm still learning what my process is. I don't know. What I'm doing, uh, I'm finding my legs as I progress throughout my career, but one thing I wasn't doing between my, my last three films was having any fun or, or, or having the presence of mind to, to recognize and be grateful. And what Hold the Dark did and, and the environment around us, sometimes I, I had to actually stop and look at these, the mountainside and the quiet, insulated air, you know, uh, sort of encircled by snow, um, and force myself, because it's, it's so stressful and it's all logistics and a certain part of your brain is being depleted as you make a movie. I said, no, I'm going I'm to, you know, amidst all this tumult and, oh, we can't get a snow cat up here, we can't bring a techno crane in this area, why are we scouting it then? If, you, if I can't shoot here, why am I here? I would just flop, I just flop back in the snow and look up. At the sky and and, and, the, and these, uh, you know, um, the, the cliffs you're talking about, the mountains, and actually take a minute yeah. and and breathe the fresh air and and be grateful. Yeah. And then get back to pissing and moaning. But hey, it was it was good. Yeah. But the the thing that struck me most about about working with you was well, several things. But I think the overriding thing was your obvious deep, um, joyous love of film. Mm -hmm. um, and love for the process and the frame. And I remember at one point, you know, when we shot that, that piece walking across that, uh, 
that frozen river, I guess, I think it was the river valley, looking at that huge vista, and you're like, dude, that's the most beautiful, that's the most beautiful thing I've ever shot, <laughs> I've ever photographed. And it was just, you know, it was just, yeah, it was infectious, you know, that, that, that spirit. Yeah, I still haven't learned how to work with actors. Though, so, you know, I'll get some <laughs> we had our moments. You well, know? no, just it's a matter of it's a language that I don't quite know. I mean, I know story. I know yeah. I know beats. I know how to find, as you say, the music. I, I, when I hear it, I'm very much in tune, and I think I can help guide. But I, I should read one of those like how to talk to actor books, right? Nah. Just don't line read. That's the, that's the main one yeah. I know, uh, which <laughs> but, I never try. But you have <laughs> a very you know you have a very specific. Um, I a very specific frame and that's fantastic you know you have like a totally clear cinematic vision mm -hmm. in your head about what you're getting now and how that slots into the overall narrative but it's all determined the footsteps along that narrative journey are determined by each frame and you've you know you got it dialed in and um, the thing that I found sometimes is I'd show up on set and I'd be like, what? We're doing you know, what? But 99.9% but .9 of the time, it all made sense and it all served the interests of, mm -hmm. of, the, uh, you know, of, of what I needed to do. And you know, so I had to figure out a couple of times to bitch about something, though. If it's, well, yeah. it can't all be perfect, you know, then that, that makes me feel uncomfortable. Well, no, but I think any small friction we had was, and, and, and I, I welcome it because it's because you care. Well, that's, and, yeah. And for me, that's the big thing, is, yeah. is having input and, and having a real stake in the story we're telling. Yeah. That, that's, you know. Yeah, well, it was, a big, it was a big, you know, big, uh, big monster that we were, you know, yeah. we, were, we were pushing up that snowy hill, yeah. you know, so. And it was fun. And it was, and, it was and, and, and I think, again, you know, we go back to, um, to the book and to Macon's script, mm -hmm. which was, just so well crafted, um, and the architecture of the thing was so well considered, and it was like let's do justice to this thing, mm -hmm. and and as well, um, the you know that the, the character of Core, you know, there was such a, a kind of humanity written into him, mm -hmm. and and such a um, an odd, unwitting uh, heroism, mm -hmm. you know written into them and uh, so yeah 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 I, I, I dug being there yeah that yeah. was awesome to have you <laughs> thank you so much for oh whoa wow we, yeah, that, that was it like, we did the run yeah, sorry one question and you guys just killed it thank cool. you so much for doing this awesome cool <laughs>